If you're like me and you own a home theater receiver, chances are you primarily use it for movies and TV shows. What you may not know is video game developers also create their games with receivers in mind and they have been doing this all the way back since the Super Nintendo console. If you have been using emulation to play classic games, you may be surprised to know that some emulators do have surround sound capabilities and in this latest video I want to take you through some of the steps that can give you this amazing feature. Before we jump into setting up the emulators, there are a few things I want to go over. If you're familiar with using surround sound audio for movies, then you have probably seen this logo or something like this come up on the receiver to indicate that you're using a certain type of surround sound. While this usually works for movies, it does not work the same way for video games. Because video games are considered real time, they don't behave the same way that movies do as movies go through a process known as rendering. This is why oftentimes there is confusion when video games show they use a certain type of surround sound in their game. Having said that, with certain games there are in-game cutscenes and those cutscenes work the same way as movies, which means you may see the logo come up on your receiver to confirm surround sound is being used. Surround sound is developed over time and as it developed, so did its use in video games. The first known surround sound was Dolby Surround, which produced four channel stereo audio. The fourth and fifth generation of consoles would use this type. 18 years later, Dolby would release Dolby Pro Logic 2, which basically increased the four channel audio to six channels. While most of the games that used Dolby Pro Logic 2 were developed within the sixth generation of games, there are a few titles that did have support for fifth and seventh generation titles. In terms of your receiver, I suggest checking to see if it supports Dolby Pro Logic or Dolby Pro Logic 2. Most receivers today support Dolby Pro Logic 2, which is backwards compatible with the previous versions. With the 7th generation of consoles, 6 channel and 8 channel digital audio became a lot more prevalent. As I mentioned before, because video games operate differently from movies, what you started to see was an option to use the Dolby Digital or DTS decoder, and this tends to show up on the receiver once selected. When trying to replicate this through emulation, however, I could not confirm if it was supported, but I can confirm that you can decode 5.1 audio using LPCM. Using LPCM requires an HDMI audio connection. It may also be possible to use SPDIF, which requires optical audio. I also want to mention that while Dolby and DTS are usually identifiers that let you know a game supports surround sound, there have been developers who have added their own type of surround sound. For example, Konami supported surround sound with Super Castlevania, but there was nothing to confirm this, so if there is a game you might be curious about, I definitely suggest giving these steps a try. For this walkthrough, I'll be using the Windows 10 operating system, NVIDIA RTX 2060, and the Denon S660H home theater receiver. In terms of connections, I currently have my PC connected directly to my receiver, but I've tested it with the ARC and confirmed it can work that way as well. So let's start with the older titles first, which mainly rely on Dolby Surround. The first thing you have to do in your Windows 10 audio settings is go to the system tray located at the bottom right hand corner where the audio icon is and right click over it. This brings up a context menu and from there you select speaker setup. Depending on your audio hardware, you'll have a few options and the one you may need to select in order to use Dolby Pro Logic 2 is stereo. Once I have selected stereo, I just have to confirm my receiver is also detecting stereo. If you have something else showing up on your receiver, you may have to play some audio for it to switch. Now that I have stereo showing on the receiver, I can use the game mode to switch to Dolby Pro Logic 2 on my receiver. With the exception of the Dolphin emulator, I've found you don't have to change specific audio settings on most emulators. I'll be going over the settings for Dolphin in just a few. For an initial test, I'm going with Donkey Kong Country 2 using the BSNES Super Nintendo emulator. In this case, I just have to make sure that the sound is set to stereo and not mono. After that, start the first level of the game and you should start hearing the surround sound take effect. Some games will have a Dolby Pro Logic or surround option. So you just want to make sure to check your audio options first to ensure the surround sound works as expected. Now let's take a look at setting up the Dolphin emulator for surround sound. Click on the config options. From there, go to the audio tab, select DSP LLE recompiler. Bear in mind that selecting this can have unwanted effects on the audio. 
Once you have selected this option, it will unlock the option for Adobe Pro Logic to decode it. Click the box and you are all set to play games that have this surround sound available. I believe that pretty much covers all of the Adobe Surround emulators. Next, we'll set up emulators that can support digital 5.1 surround sound. First thing you want to do is go back to the system tray, right click over the audio icon, select speaker setup, and this time choose 5.1. Make sure your receiver has detected the 5.1 output. Once you have that confirmed, we can start setting up emulators. First, we'll set up CMU. Click on options and go to general settings. Click on the audio tab. From here, you want to go to the TV section and change the channels option to surround. Close out the window and you're all set to use the 5.1 surround sound on supported games. Lastly, I'll show you how to set up 5.1 audio for the RPCS3 emulator. Because RPSC3 gives you the option to configure per game, I suggest using the create customer configuration. Click on the audio tab. This specific game supports Dolby Digital 5.1, so choosing surround sound 5.1 will work. Depending on the type of connection you have, you may want to choose the manual option. Here you'll be able to select the supported surround sound type. As I mentioned before, the LPCM or linear PCM is only supported by an HDMI connection, whereas Dolby Digital 5.1 and DTS 5.1 are supported by an optical connection. Once you have selected your surround sound type, save the configuration and you should be all set to enjoy surround sound. Making sure your surround sound is working accurately can be a bit challenging in some cases. Certain games do have the ability to test your surround sound, and I'll list a few of those in the comment section below. There have also been some efforts made to create surround sound that use technologies like Q-Sound, a virtual surround sound that only used two stereo channels. Q-Sound was greatly supported by Capcom and Sega also used it for their consoles. Someone took the time to convert Q-Sound to 5.1 using an application called Equalizer APO, and if you're interested in setting this up, I've left a link in the comment section below. Being able to use surround sound with emulators definitely helps enhance the gaming experience even further, and I hope this guide will help you benefit from this feature. While not all emulators support surround sound, one can hope that they will in the future, and I for one certainly look forward to it. If you found this information in the video to be helpful, I ask that you please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing. For now, this is The Core, your entertainment techie, signing out.